What's up everybody, Camro here, and welcome to part 75 of my How to Make a Pokemon Game tutorial series. In this episode, we are going to be looking at signpost graphics. First, we're going to install a script and a collection of graphics into our game. Then afterwards, we're going to edit that script so that way it changes which signpost graphic displays for our maps. Then afterwards, we're going to edit these graphics to make our own custom new graphic to appear for our maps. With all that said, let's get into it. So the first thing that you want to do is follow the link in the description to reach this Relic Castle post here. This is an edit from Lost Souls Dev and Carmaniac by Purple Zaffir. And uh, you really just want to click download right here to download this collection. And I've already gone and downloaded it, and it is right here. So essentially, what this is is a script, a guide, and a collection of map graphics. When we open the script, what we see is this bit right here. What we want to do is we just want to copy all of this script, then we want to go into our game here, go to the script editor, and go to pfield underscore visuals. What you could do is just go and replace all of this. You could also make a backup of this if you want, but for the purpose of going through this tutorial quickly, I'm just going to replace all of it here with our lovely new method. And just like that, our script is installed. We will be editing this a bit later. And once again, this is in pfield underscore visuals. It's down quite a ways in our scripts, but essentially there it is. It's already installed. Now what we need to do is make sure that we also get the graphics in our game. What you want to do is go to this maps folder here and just copy it. You just want to copy the whole dang folder. Then you want to go into your project, go to graphics, and you just want to place that sucker in right there. So now we have a new maps folder. And within this folder is a bunch of lovely graphics here. This is the, what blank looks like. This is what it looks like when you go to a cave. That's pretty dang cool. If you're going to a big town, to a forest, they got a lot of really good ones here. And these are from Heart Gold Soul Silver. If you want to, you could go and try to download some other ones from like the Spriders resource. These are from Heart Gold Soul Silver as well. But I believe that these are already included here. Yeah, looks like they've already got them. A lot of Heart Gold Soul Silver graphics. So, let's just run our game now and take a look at how these look in game. These are basically already set up to work pretty good. Look at that. There's our new town, and you can see that displays there with black text with the graphic. Now, if we go up here to Route 1, look at that. It's using our updated signpost graphic. However, let's say we wanted to use a different graphic, or we wanted to even change how the text looks. What we can do is we can scroll up here and we can actually change the base color of our text. Let's say we wanted it to appear pure white. Like we could do 255 here, 255 here, 255. We could update the, uh, update the shading a little bit as well. This is the shadow that appears beneath the text. We could just make this all 200. There we go. And now you'll notice here there's a conditional or a bunch of conditionals here. And this is where we're going to be doing most of our scripting. And it's going to be very easy scripting. Essentially, the way that this script works is if the name of our map includes the word root, then pull up root underscore one. Otherwise, else if, if it includes town, load town one. Otherwise, if it includes lake, include lake, so on and so forth. We could edit this to add our own conditional branches. For example, what we could do is make it so that way by default, if it includes root, then instead of loading up root underscore one, we can make it load root underscore two. So we can just edit that right here. And then we could put another one else if here, and we can make it so that way, else if it includes palette. Oh, I think I have my caps lock on. Let me turn that off. There we go. If it includes palette, instead of loading town one, we can make that load a different graphic. Like what else could we load? We have town one, we could load root underscore one, HGSS underscore one, Let's make it load HGSS underscore four. I think that looks kind of neat. It's like a little like wooden panel. That's not bad. Let me tell you, that is not bad. Let's go in and do that right now. So, what was that? HGSS underscore four? Bada boom. So now if we load into Pallet Town, it'll use this. So the way that the script works is if it checks to see if any of these is true from top to bottom. And once one of them is true, that's what it chooses. And then it exits the loop. So for example, if it includes root, it'll choose this. For the for the map Pallet Town, it'll check Pallet before it checks Town. So Pallet Town should use the HGSS underscore four graphic. 
Now, let's run our game and see how it looks. I'm willing to bet that it looks pretty dang good. Whoa, there's our graphic. Look at that. Now, let's go up to route one. Hey, there we go, it's using a different route graphic. I'm just realizing now that this is actually not using the HGSS underscore four that we specified, so let me take a look at that real quick. Ah, there it is, I made the simplest trick in the book. The name of our map isn't actually Pallet Town, we're using Pokemon Essentials. This is Lapit Town. So, let's just go and add that real quick. Silly me, you know, I, I mixed up my palettes and my Lapits. I only realized it recently, but Pokemon Essentials uses two different regions, Essen and Teal for Essentials. Anyway, there we are. There is our new graphic. For Lapit Town, we use HGSS underscore four. And now for Route 1, we're using the Route 2 graphic. And I think that graphic looks way better, honestly. Look how nice that looks. It's got a little tree there with the mountain ranges. God dang, that's pretty cool. But what if we wanted to add our own custom new graphic? Well. It's as easy as adding a new graphic to that folder. What we want to do is we want to go into our maps folder once again, and we could just take something like, I don't know, HGSS underscore one. Here we have a lovely looking graphic. There's like a little green roaming grass hill. There's some like little bits of leaves. There's some transparency in the corners there. This is a perfectly good looking graphic. What we could do is just make a quick, simple edit to it. I like to do this by going color overlay, and let's make it look kind of like a sunset. Let's try to add some sort of orange color to it. So we could do a color overlay. We could try doing hue. I think hue doesn't look too bad. You know, this is just to make a point. Essentially, if you want, if you're a really good sprite artist, you could go in and you could start drawing trees and you could start making your own custom stuff here. You could draw a smiley face. Yeah, it's beautiful. All right. So instead of overriding HGSS underscore one with our own horrible art, or in your case, it's probably very good art, but in my case, it ain't too great. Let's just call this HGSS underscore nine. There we go. So whenever we go into a map that is flagged to use HGSS underscore nine, we're gonna be greeted by this perfection. So let's go back into our map and let's make it so that way if the name includes Lapit, it loads HGSS underscore nine. All right. Let's give this a go, shall we? All right, booting up our map, lap it town. Hey, there it is, there's the smiley face and everything. Awesome. Now we can do that. Super awesome. Cool. There are a couple other little tweaks you can make to the script. Um, for most of these, I would say that you just mess around with it. You can go down here and take a look at like the positions of the text. You can, we already did this in the tutorial, but you can modify the color of the text. There's a lot of cool little things that you can do. Uh, one thing that I think is kind of cool is to just like edit the map name. Theoretically, you could um, make it so that way instead of appearing uh, that far to the left, you could increase this number here. So that way the X value is pushing the text a little bit further to the right. Uh, what you could do is make it so that way it's pushed a little bit further down. Uh, so for example, this is the Y value. So instead of subtracting 47, if we wanted it to be a little bit higher, I believe that you would want to subtract a little bit less. So let's try that now. Let's load it in now, shall we? And by that, I think I mean a little bit lower. There we go. Our text is a little bit lower and a little bit further to the left. So this is, you can totally mess around with the values here until it looks about how you like it. Let me try messing around with these a little bit more. You know what? Let's, uh, let's not make it so far over. You know what? Actually, let's go crazy. I take it back. Let's just go absolutely crazy. Let's push it way off to the left. <laughs> or way off to the right. Look at that. Look at our lovely nameplate there. It's covering our smiley face and everything. Ta-da, and you see root one. So yeah, that's how you can mess around with some values in your nameplates. You can get them looking snazzy. Anyway, I think that about does it for this tutorial. It was kind of a short one, but hopefully you found this to be useful. Uh, it's very easy to install this script and start plugging in graphics for your maps. If your game is a bit more complex, then you might have to set up a little bit more filters or be smart about how you use your filters. Definitely don't forget that it goes from top to bottom and any map that includes root will by default use that root thing or this root. So if you wanted to be more specific, you could make it so that way root one uses a different graphic than say root two. And the way that you'd accomplish that is by doing something like this where 
if root one, you know, else if root two, so on and so forth. So that would be how you get a little bit more specific. But if you want all of your roots to use the same graphic, you could just put root right up there at the very top. All the cities right now are gonna use all the same graphic. So yeah, you can mess around with this, make some custom graphics and get some cool effects for your game. Anyway, that about does it for me for this tutorial. I wanna say thank you so much once again for watching. I appreciate you. And uh, yeah, be sure to follow me on Twitch. I've been streaming there a bit more than I had in the past. Things are going pretty decent, I think. Uh, I appreciate everybody who watches me on Twitch. I love you guys, Cam Fam, Thundogang, all that good stuff. Uh, I appreciate everybody's support. And uh, yeah, I appreciate you for watching this video. Thank you so much once again. Remember to uh, like and subscribe and all that good stuff. And until the next tutorial, I hope that you guys all have a good one.